Hello Embedded Geeks. Welcome to the next video in this series. This video series explains completely about microcontrollers using ARM and Oryx based boards. Today we concentrate on how do we start doing projects with STM32 discovery board. As we mentioned before, we used ARM based STM32 407 controller and Infineon Oryx DC27 board to explain whole embedded concepts. Today let's understand about our discovery board, how we'll buy this, how we'll install the IDE and then we will do a demo using this uh, new STM32 discovery board and uh, the IDE which we installed. So are you ready? Let's start. This is CocoaWatt. Let's innovate, educate and boost tomorrow with technology. Let's explore some key aspects of the STM32 discovery board. At the core of the board lies the microcontroller, specifically the STM32F407VGT6. This is a 32-bit microcontroller powered by an ARM Cortex-M4 processor with a floating point unit. To interface with external components such as LEDs, buttons, sensors and actuators, the board is equipped with a set of I.O. pins. Additionally, it features an 8 MHz crystal oscillator, which serves as the clock source for the microcontroller. One of the standout features of this board is its integrated onboard programmer and debugger. It's ST-Link based. This allows us to program and debug applications directly on the board. We will cover the driver installation process for the ST-Link when discussing the IDE setup. For further details about the board, you can refer to the official board data brief, which is available on ST Microcontrol Microelectronics website. A link to this document will be provided in the description. The STM32 discovery board also includes a variety of built-in features such as audio chunk, accelerometer, on-port potentiometers, LEDs, buttons, making it a versatile platform for development and prototyping. Now, how will buy this board? We can order directly from ST site also. This is also available in uh, other uh, electronics online shops like DigiKey and Elements14. It is also available in Amazon. I will provide you the buying option from Amazon in description because you can easily order from Amazon. Now we will talk about how we will download and install IDE. We use STM32 Cube IDE throughout our playlist. It is an Eclipse based IDE customized for STM32 controllers. Uh, by the way, what is an IDE? It is a tool or software to develop your code, campaign, link, flash, and debug the code. We may have to configure compilers and debuggers in some cases. To install the IDE, we have to first go to ST site to download. I will provide this link in this description. Come bottom, uh, you can select the downloading option as per your uh, OS. I am selecting for Windows and version uh, if you have any specific version if you want you can select I am going with latest version you can accept the terms and conditions downloading option you can select this is guest and you have to fill the details here. I am filling my details finally after giving all details you can click on get download link option The link would have received in your mail. You can use this uh, within 24 hours. Within 24 hours, you have to download this. So just go ahead and download and let's see after that. So this is downloaded here. You can extract this zip file. I have extracted this and uh, kept it here already because it may take some two to three minutes. Now you can run the exe with administrative privilege. Uh, 
it will start installing and this window is popping up because I have installed it already. This won't be the case if you are installing for the very first time. You can do yes and uh, you can follow the instructions. It's very straightforward. You can choose the C drive for uh, installation drive and here you have to choose all these drivers because um, ST-Link as we told before it is uh, important for compilation and debugging. So you have to choose all these drivers. Then you can choose next stop again. Okay. It will take few minutes so you can grab a T and come. So now our hardware, uh, our target board is ready. We have installed ID. It's a time to create our first project. Normally after installation shortcut will be available on desktop. Just launch it. You have to provide the workspace location. I'm not changing that here. So just wait. The very first time when we are launching the IDE, it will be with the information center page. So in this page itself, uh, you can create your uh, first project. Uh, click you can click here or you can create the project from file new and create new st32 project it will be launching the target selector please wait patiently now you can create your project in two ways uh, here you can select the, the microcontroller uh, directly by entering the specific microcontroller name or you can enter your board name as like I entered here. So here you can choose the uh, microcontroller and create project. You can give your uh, project name here. I am just giving first project. Project type for this uh, demo, let's select STM32 cube based. Uh, we will do projects from scratch also using MP configurations. So very first time when creating the board, it will download uh, packages from ST side. Your first project is uh, getting ready. So once the project is created successfully and packages are available that will be having all these folders and files. In case if this is not available, you can log in ST site after navigating help ST32 cube updates. After logging, you can uh, try creating project again. So all uh, these uh, files and folders will be uh, created. Now, let's create an LED blinking program. This is our controller uh, pinout view. Here we can configure our peripherals. So timers. Uh, here we can uh, see that uh, our peripherals uh, so here uh, USB, I2, CSP, all are enabled, but we are not using those in project. So uh, which are peripherals not using that we can disable here, um, USB, SPI, I2C. So we are disabling. Now uh, in our layout, we can come to our layout part. Uh, so in this layout, uh, we, we let's see where these LEDs are connected. LEDs are connected at the uh, right side. Uh, four LEDs are available. These are connected in PD3, PD4, PD14, and PD15. We can create a project to blink this uh, red LED. Now uh, we have to generate code for this. 
like this which are peripheral, peripheral we need that uh, we can configure in this way and generate code like this so we can go project and generate code option So source codes are uh, generated and the peripherals are initialized here as you can see and uh, the user application normally we can write inside this while loop. So what are we going to do? We are toggling a red LED which was connected in 14th pin of our GPU port D with a 1 second delay. We will see in detail about uh, what is GPIO port and in depth uh, about these functions mean. For the time being, we just create a project and see how uh, the build is happening and how we can flash the binaries uh, to the uh, target port. So our code is ready. So pin 14, uh, we are trying to toggle here. To build this project, either we can right click on our project and select the build project option. Otherwise, you can build the project from project menu and build project. So here it is builder now with zero errors and zero warnings. Now we have to connect our board. Let's connect. You can see a program to blink blue LED is already running in this board. Let's look how we'll flash the new binaries to the board. Right click. On the project, navigate to debug as option, choose STM32C C++ application. It's try to connect to debugger. It is asking to switch to debug perspective. Downloading is finished successfully. Now, let us see uh, what is happening on our board. Code has been downloaded. Just We will reset the board so uh, we can see uh, our code is running here. LED is blinking. The red LED is blinking one second delay. So you have created your first project in STM32 f one Discovery Board successfully. Congratulations. In upcoming videos, we will discuss the peripherals and the programming concepts very detailed. Stay tuned. Don't forget to click on subscribe button. Thank you.